You guys really need to see this. I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Amazing and ridiculous at the same time. Hello everyone, I'm Steven from Exco Garnet Blog and Photography. Today we'll be having a short review of this figurine right here on my table, which is Amakuni's 1x7 skill, Helena Blavatsky from Fate Grand Order. You are looking at the limited edition, there are two versions of this figurine, the regular version, so-called regular version, and limited edition which commands a 2000 or 2500 yen premium over the regular one. The main difference is just the base, right? So the limited edition, you get this additional U4 base and an extra pair of these supporting rods, but the original base is still included. As for why a magician or a caster would be sitting on top of a UFO, Yes, you would have to play the Game Fit Grand Order to really understand what it is all about. To put things in short for people who are unfamiliar with Fit Grand Order, it is just a part of her noble phantasm. Think of like an ultimate attack you of a character in an RPG game. Yeah, that is what we call noble phantasm in FGO. Now moving on to the packaging, her box is pretty huge for a figurine like this because they needed to accommodate the huge base right there. I personally have no idea how large or small the base, I mean the box of the original version is. And Amakuni is a pretty, a rather premium figurine manufacturer so it is reflected in their packaging, their box. This is a very tough, high quality box. You don't get flimsy crap like this one. In you know what the hell is this? Uh, Alright, whatever. The very first thing I look for in a figurine isn't the paint quality or the quality control in general. Yes, quality is important but even more important is the support and this figure excels in it. If I were to shake this figure, right, violently shake this figure, as you can see, only these two floating objects are swaying around but the figure remains rather still. It does not wobble. So this is a sign of a very well supported figure. Some larger and heavier figures, what happens is that despite their weight, they have only one single foot standing and plugging into the base and when you shake it, the whole thing just wobbles and the leg is going to, you know, seems like it is going to break off any time. That is a very poor figurine design, but not with this one. And to be honest, I actually prefer her original base over this one because the original base looks rather detailed and it would take up less space in a display cabinet. With regards to the paint job, one thing you need to know if you're unfamiliar with Amakuni and Hobby Japan is that they are one of the more premium figurine makers alongside the likes of Alter. So, they don't really compromise on paint quality and it is reflected in this figure. This figure is no exception. I went through an inspection of the figurine from head to toe and I could not find anything to complain about. The paint job is pretty much perfect. And one major fact about premium figurine makers is the way they paint their figurine. For example, you look at the hair of this figure, her bangs right in front here. You could see streaks 
of different levels of shading of magenta. You have a bright light shading and then you have a richer tone and then it goes back into a lighter shade. This sort of shading or weathering as we call it, you don't really see it in every figurine manufacturer. Kotobukiya for example, all they do is a flat paint job. They give it a clean finish. You can't really fault them for their quality, but at the same time, they don't do more than necessary. A clean work, a flat result with no shading because they wanted to cut cost. But Amakuni isn't the type to do that, right? Alter is also the same. If you look at their figures, you will see a lot of shading. So this is something I really look out for in expensive figurines and this one does not disappoint. This figure comes with an extra facial expression, which I don't really prefer. I prefer the default one. And in order to swap it, you will need to replace her entire head, which you remove the wrist first before you get to the head. For the packs that connect to the neck, the hole in the neck, it is a bit difficult to insert, but not because that it is too tight, but rather the angle of insertion is very specific. So don't force it in. We make sure to rotate it at a very precise angle. Then it will go in nicely. It is neither too tight nor too loose, just nice. Her barrette on her head is attached via a magnet. Not a particularly strong magnet, but it gets the job done. If I were to invert her head, it won't fall off. So that is good enough. But one thing I did notice about her barrette is the, the magnet that is situated within inside this, this piece right here. If I were to shake it, you could hear the sound of the magnet wobbling around. So I'm unsure if this is specific to my copy or it is the case for every unit out there. Just a minor complaint, might be, it might have dislodged, right? The magnet is supposed to be glued inside, but it dislodged. That might be the case, I'm unsure myself, but it does not affect the figure in any way. It still sticks on. So yeah, I'll, I'll just let that slide. The thing that impresses me the most about this figurine is definitely her grimoire right here, the floating grimoire. So I was already amazed by the cover on the outside. It is so detailed, so finely paint, you can't fault it anywhere. And then there are the text on the inner pages, which looks mighty fine to me. But then after I did photography on this figure, I transferred the photo to Adobe Lightroom to edit. And I noticed that the text on the book are really sharp and clear. You could read them actually. So this surprised me a little, but considering the press she's commanding for, I guess they don't really cut corners. They are giving you your money's worth. So this is pretty impressive. As for how this figurine cost, at least for the limited editions, she is fetching, supposed to, supposed to fetch for about 22,000 yen or 220 US dollars inclusive of the Japanese tax, excluding shipping. Though by now the prices have gone up by a substantial amount in the Japanese market. She's, she is fetching for about 350 to 450 US dollars. It's, it is kind of ridiculous, but fit grand order stuff plus Amakuni, that is what you get. My personal regret is I did not buy Anna Medusa when she came out back in 2019. And now I am facing the same issue, a highly inflated price. So I'm not going to repeat the same mistake. I, qu I quickly grabbed one as soon as I found one for a decent price. Before I end this video, the question would be, should you get one of these if you are a fan of Fate Grand Order? And the answer is a pretty easy one. If you are a fan of Helena, yes, go for it. But the catch is, as I mentioned earlier, her price has already inflated now. 
And when I see something like this, it makes me feel salty over the fact that Aniplex was the one who did Ishtar and Arash Gigal, not Amakuni. To be honest, I don't really like the quality, the work of Aniplex. They are good enough, but not really at this level. Yet the pricing is very similar, so you, you do get the idea. The value for money is a bit lesser. It is how it is. And I suppose that is pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. And if you did, please drop a like, follow my page on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching, and see you again.